Thank you very much. May as well enjoy that honeymoon period while it lasts. <laughs> very grateful to be here with you today. Uh, it is a little intimidating, you know. Yesterday, uh, I was named bishop-elect, and today I get to speak to the whole archdiocese. <laughs> so it's a, a bit intimidating for me. Uh, people have been asking me all day, what's it like, what, how long have you known, all of this stuff. And everybody, of course, wants to hear a little bit about the story. So uh, it was a Tuesday afternoon, the 1st of October, the Feast of St. Therese, one of my favorite saints. But I didn't know what she had in store for me that day. And uh, the poor apostolic nuncio, I had a very busy day, and his secretary tried me three times. The apostolic nuncio is the Pope's representative to the United States. And it wasn't until the third call came in on my cell phone that I listened to the message, and it turned out to be actually a friend of mine, Sister Mary Joanna, who is, used to be Christian Ruland. And she and I were in St. Paul's outreach years ago together here in the Twin Cities. And she said, uh, uh, Father Cousins, uh, the nuncio, His Excellency Archbishop Regano, would like to speak to you as soon as possible. And at that point, my heart beat because it began to be very quickly, and I began to try to think of other reasons the nuncio would want to speak to me <laughs> besides being a bishop. So I called him back, and they put me right through, and he just said very simply, he said, uh, Father Cousins, uh, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has nominated you to be the Auxiliary Bishop of St. Paul in Minneapolis. Do you accept? <laughs> and I had that brief moment of prayer where your whole life flashes before your eyes, and I said, because I knew it was God's will, I accept. So uh, then I had to live for nine days with a papal secret uh, thankfully, our, our, he told Archbishop Neinstead right away, who called me right after that, and Archbishop Neinstead and I talked about when would be a good time to make this announcement. And it did occur to me when he suggested yesterday that it would be the day before this very large gathering of the Archdiocese, and I was grateful, actually, to have a chance to see all of you in this moment. Uh, what I've been asked to speak to you about just a little bit is about the Sacred Heart of Jesus which is something I love very much, and it's very easy to talk about the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And I just want to tell you a few things about this, because in a few moments, Archbishop Neinstead is going to lead us in a consecratory prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The Sacred Heart of Jesus, of course, is a lot like your and my heart. The Sacred Heart of Jesus was a human heart, and we know what the heart of our what our hearts are like, right? Our heart is the place where we love. Our heart is the center of our person. It's the place where we have our deepest affections. It's that intimate sanctuary that every person has where they have them deepest selves. The Sacred Heart of Jesus is just like our heart in the sense of he knows the same pains and sorrows that we know in our heart. He knows the sufferings that we know. He also knows the joys that we know. The Sacred Heart of Jesus is different from our heart, though, as well, because in the Sacred Heart of Jesus is not only a fully human heart, but actually the heart of God the Father. Jesus' own heart contains, it unites heaven and earth, and it contains both that human love and divine love. In fact, in the heart of Jesus is the love that the Father has for every single human person. That love that knew each of us before time began. And the heart of Jesus really has one desire. It's the desire that's expressed when Jesus is on the cross. And when Jesus cries out on the cross, I thirst. You see, in that desire, he thirsts for what? He thirsts for you. He thirsts for your love. He thirsts that the love he has for you would be received and given back to him. 
It's the one thing the Sacred Heart of Jesus desires. And when one encounters the Sacred Heart of Jesus, one encounters this very personal love that knows me, that knows my sufferings, my struggles, and wants me to know most of all that I'm loved. The other thing we're going to talk about is a consecration. We're going to do a consecration to the hearts of Jesus and Mary. What's a consecration? Of course, a consecration is setting something aside. A consecration, when we set something aside, we set it aside because it's special or holy. In fact, when we talk about a consecration, we're talking about something that's given for God. So we speak, for example, about priests and religious being consecrated people because their whole life is given for God. But the truth is, all of us were consecrated in our baptism. All of us belong to God by virtue of our baptism. And it's actually very important as Catholics that we consistently strengthen and renew the gift of our life to God that was made for us in baptism. And that's what we do when we do a simple consecration prayer like we're going to do. I claim for myself that I give my heart to Jesus. I claim for myself that I want to receive the love of the heart of Jesus. I give myself to Jesus whenever I consecrate myself to him. And I desire then to live in his love. Now what does the heart of Mary have to do with all this? Well here I want to speak to you about something very personal to me. You know that every new bishop, when he is uh, chosen to be a bishop, he comes up with a motto. You might know that Archbishop Ninestead's motto is ut unum sint, that they may be one. What a beautiful prayer, right? That same prayer that he spoke about in Mass today when we read that line from the Gospel. That's what Archbishop Ninestead's whole episcopacy is about, bringing unity, right? Well, so I have to come up with a motto, you know? And I've been thinking about this for the last 10 days. And actually, when I thought about it, there's been a prayer that's been going through my mind. And it's actually a prayer that Mother Teresa of Calcutta taught to her sisters. And they pray this prayer every day. I'm just going to read you this prayer. It's a prayer to Mary. Mary, our dearest mother, give us your heart. So beautiful, so pure, so immaculate, your heart so full of love and humility, that we may be able to receive the bread of life, that we may be able to love Jesus as you love him, and to serve him in the distressing disguise of the poorest of the poor. You see what the prayer is? Mary, lend us your heart, because Mary's heart is the heart that's most open to Jesus. And if she'll lend us our heart, then we can love him with that pure beauty of her heart. And so actually I've decided that's going to be my motto. Lend us your heart. Lend us your heart. Mary, lend me your heart so that I can love Jesus. Jesus, lend me your heart so that I can love others with your heart. In case you're wondering, in Latin it'll be prebe nobis cor tuum. Lend us your heart. You know, if you want to understand the heart of Jesus most clearly, all you have to do is look at the cross. Because you see on the cross, you see what the heart of Jesus is really about. What happens in Jesus' heart on the cross? What happens is that Jesus receives into his heart evil, anger, hatred, suffering, and even sin. And then what does Jesus do? He allows that evil to die in his heart. And he gives back love. He gives back mercy. 
You see, that's the goal of our Christian lives, that our hearts would become like Jesus' heart. And this is the way we must approach all the evil and sin in the world. Yes, sometimes that evil, it comes into our hearts. We receive it in various ways. But if Jesus will lend us his heart, then that evil, it can die in our heart. And we can learn like Jesus to forgive. We can learn like Jesus to give back love even when we receive evil. This is really the goal of consecrating ourselves. And in fact, Archbishop Neinstead is going to consecrate the whole archdiocese to the Sacred Heart and to the Immaculate Heart. That in fact, in our archdiocese, the love which flows out, which heals and brings mercy, might flow out from all of us.